Hi all, uh, I'm now going to deal with Gulliver's Travels Part 1. That's to say, Gulliver's Visit to Lilliput. And uh, as you know, I'm Dr. Kala S.J., an Associate Professor of English at Fatima College, Madurai. So now, here is an introduction to Part 1, A Voyage to Lilliput. This particular part is a profound satire that critiques various aspects of 18th century English society. And here the writer Jonathan Swift uses tiny little pe people who are of just six inches of Lilliput to mirror the political, religious and social absurdities of his time. If you have watched my video on satire, I would have told you about how satire is a novel that deals with the absurdities, okay? So here, in this particular part, he deals with the social absurdities of his time. So to start with, let's look at the uh, Lili uh, Samuel, uh, sorry, Lemuel Gulliver's uh, voyage to Lilliput as a political satire. So when you look at it as a political satire, you will find that this, there was in the first part of the novel a ri rivalry between Lilliput and Blefisco. Blefisco is a neighboring uh, nation and how this one rose up because this rivalry or this animosity between the two nations popped up because of a very silly uh, issue which is called the egg controversy. When you read the novel, you understand that uh, the Lilliputs and Blefiscos were actually breaking their eggs at the big ends, okay? But then one day when the prince was trying to break the egg and he hurt himself, it was decided that thereafter they would break the egg at the small end. So all those people who, have, who really uh, complied with it, they stayed in Lilliput, but the others who didn't were either sent on exile to Blefisco or they themselves fled to Blefisco and they took their refuge in Blefisco because Blefisco was already breaking their eggs at the big end. So the little Lilliputians are divided into two factions over how to break an egg on the big end or little end. Is it so, is it such a big issue? Okay, so this particular issue is a conflict and this conflict leads to a war. And here, using this particular incident, uh, Jonathan Swift tries to satirize the trivial reasons behind the many real world conflicts. So Swift tries to mock the long standing feud between, feud between England and France uh, telling all of us or uh, hinting at the fact that the feud between England and France is not, is not a great one or is not built upon a very serious issue but it's on a very very trivial issue and that behind that dispute there is nothing uh, great but it's very trivial as ridiculous as the egg controversy. Okay, So now the next one when you look at is the emperor's court and politicians. Now it's so funny uh, when Gulliver is really uh, really let free a little. He watches how the people there, especially the administrators there, the government officials, they try to please their emperor uh, by performing certain skills so that they would gain some political favor. That way Flimnap, the treasurer, he, ha he, he demonstrates his acrobatic skills and he uses that to gain political favor. And this particular incident is a lampoon on the absurdity and corruption in the English court. Likewise, you find that the politicians seem to gain office through psychophancy and trivial qualifications. Uh, basically, if you take the politicians are not so qualified or, or rather they are not well qualified, they get into politics or into any important position mainly because of their family. So it's kind of, uh, it's just, it just passes from one generation to another 
or they get into even with a mild uh, qualification, minimum qualification, mainly because they are able to uh, curry favor among the politicians there. So this is a critique of the lack of meritocracy. Then you find that the, uh, in the emperor's court, there is a rope dancing taking place. And this, and this practice is meant for candidates who are applying for high office. Probably if you say it is meant for people who take up the highest position in the bureaucracy. And so if they have to get, that, get to that position, they must dance on a tight rope. So this is being satirized, uh, the arbitrary and the dangerous ways in which people gain political power. And this highlights the absurd lengths to which an individual can go, individual and individual or individuals can go mainly to attain power and favor. Then when you look at the articles of impeachment against Gulliver, uh, that's all based upon false accusations and punishments. And Gulliver is charged with treason for not something great that he has done, for something trivial as trivial as urinating on the palace, especially when, 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 it, were, when, when it was all set ablaze, when, when, it, when there was a fire trying to bring it down to ground zero. So at that point of time, he, try, he urinates on the palace and he extinguishes the fire. And for this, for this trivial uh, punishment, for this trivial, tri what to say, um, misbehavior, he's been, uh, given harsh and disproportionate punishment and this again reflects the arbitrary nature of justice and the political machinations in Swift's England. So now we move on to the religious satire. Here you find the conflict between the big Indians versus the little Indians uh, highlights upon the religious schisms especially the conflict over how to break an egg. Is that very important in the society when there are so many people dying of poverty, dying of hunger and thirst in the present era? At this point of time, uh, there are, they, they wonder at where to break the egg, how to break the egg, either at the big end or the little end. And so this particular incident, Swift brings forth to satirize the religious dispute between the Catholics, the big Indians, and the Protestants, the little Indians in England. And through that, he criticizes the petty nature of these disputes, which are as trivial as the Lilliputians egg controversy. And now we come on to the high heels versus low heels. What do you find? This is again, uh, the division between uh, two different or major parties, political parties in Lilliput. But then that uh, symbolizes or talks about uh, the parties in England. The high heels referring to the Tories and the low heels referring to Whigs uh, in England. So he threw the high heels party and the low heels party off in Lilliput. Jonathan Swift tries to satirize the political parties in England and he mocks the superficial differences that often characterize the political divisions. So next we move on to the social satire. And here you find that the Lilliputian society and the laws uh, have severe punishments. They impose harsh penalties for even minor offenses such as uh, it might be even lying or fraudulent, cases of fraudulence and so on. And this particular event of, uh, of imposing severe punishment satirizes severity and sometimes the absurdity of contemporary legal systems. And through these, Swift suggests that societal values are misplaced when minor transgressions are treated with extreme severity. Okay, then we go on to talk about the vanity and triviality. P people are so obsessed with appearances. Even the women, when the first time when they came to see Gulliver, Gulliver talks about their embroidered petticoats, how the queen dresses up in the Lilliput, in Lilliput, how the empress dresses up. So the Lilliput, Lilliputians are preoccupied with trivial matters, especially like Gulliver's size 
and their elaborate ceremonies. Gulliver, they refer to Gulliver as Man Mountain. So it satirizes the vanity and uh, superficiality of European society. It also criticizes how people are often more concerned with what? Appearances. They're more bothered about appearances than about uh, the caliber or potentials or talents. They're bothered about appearances and status than with substantiate substantive uh, uh, issues. So now we come on to the emperor's character. You find that there is despotism and absurdity. The, the emperor in Lilliput, uh, you can, um, he ridicules decrees and he's obsessed with power and control. So this mirrors the despotic tendencies of European monarchs. So you, you can equate the emperor in Lilliput with the emperors in Europe. So here through this incident or through this reference, Swift tries to critique the arbitrary and capricious nature of monarchical rule. So we now move on to a co the commentary on human nature. We find that uh, through this particular part one, uh, the voyage, to Lilliput, the Swift tries to sat satirize on pettiness and hypocrisy. Lilliput chins always have petty squabbles and they're obsessed with minor details. You know, they, they even go after checking uh, Gulliver's pockets. They write a detailed memorandum of it. So they are very obsessed with minor details and their behavior is very hypocritical, especially when they condemn Gulliver for urinating and why did Gulliver urinate he didn't have any other go he didn't have any other means to put the fire off to extinguish the fire and so in order to save people and the palace from being burned down being brought down to ashes he urinated but that is looked at that's being condemned so they are hypocritical and that reflects the pettiness and hypocrisy of the human nature then we see that Gulliver is very naive uh, and there's a naivete and uh, he's very gullible also. Initially, people really admire Gulliver too, too much and likewise Gulliver also has great admiration for the Lilliputian society. But then uh, gradually he understands that he was wrong and he tends to see the absurdities that reflect human gullibility and the ease with which people can be blinded by their appearances. So, so far these are the different uh, uh, aspects of satire that you find in Gulliver's Travels Part 1 which is Gulliver's Voyage to Lilliput. So here through this Jonathan Swift employs satire to critique the political, religious and social absurdities uh, or that were prevalent during Jonathan Swift's time. And he does that by creating a miniature world, a tiny world of Lilliput, through which Swift exposes the pettiness, corruption, hypocrisy of human nature and society. So we find that the seemingly trivial conflicts and practices of the Lilliputians really helps Jonathan Swift to mirror the real, the real world follies, follies and foibles and flaws of the 18th century Europe. And thus, he encourages the readers to reflect on the irrationalities and injustices of his own world. Thank you so much for listening to me so patiently. Hope this was useful to you. Thank you.